As you can see here now, we have no stuttering, good FPS, and everything looks amazing. Hello everyone. I often get asked how to maximize Microsoft Flight Simulator's performance without compromising its breathtaking graphics. Over time, I've assisted numerous individuals in optimizing their hardware to get the most out of their sim. In today's video, I'll guide you through my usual approach step by step. This technique has proven effective for many users, simplifying the process by eliminating the overwhelming guesswork associated with the vast array of possible adjustments. If you find this guide helpful, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more content like this. Your support really helps the channel grow. Plus, we have an extremely knowledgeable group in the Discord, so be sure to check that out. Before we dive into optimizing Microsoft Flight Simulator, there are three important points to consider. One, understanding hardware limitations. Remember, your performance is ultimately limited by your hardware. Despite all the adjustments we make, there's a limit to what your hardware can achieve. Microsoft Flight Simulator is particularly demanding on the CPU, and having an older processor might restrict your performance improvements. I'd also love to hear from you. Share your current hardware specs and settings in the comments below. Let's help each other find the best setups. Moving on to number two, the NSIM adjustments focus. Our focus will solely be on tweaks within the simulator. While there are numerous modifications possible outside of the sim, not everyone is comfortable with external changes. For those interested in external edits, I have several other videos, some linked below, which you can explore at your own pace. And no, we won't be talking about the frame generation mod on non-4000 series cards in this video. And finally, three, balancing frame rate and visual quality. The aim isn't necessarily to achieve the highest frame rate, but to maintain a smooth and stable performance while maintaining visual quality. For a flight simulator, a consistent 30 to 60 frames per second can be more desirable than a higher, less stable frame rate. With that being said, this method is a bit counterintuitive in the fact that we will push more processes off onto the GPU to free up your CPU overhead. The side effect of this is wonderful though, as it will actually increase the visual quality and performance of the sim. Some quick preparation tips. Ensure your GPU driver is updated, your community folder is cleaned up with only the items you really want, and unnecessary background programs are closed. MSFS is CPU intensive, and certain CPU focused programs running in the background can cause performance issues like stuttering. Most importantly, you need to review the amazing post by the original Babu on the MSFS forums linked below. This man has done an enormous amount of testing for the community to show what settings do what and how they affect your performance. We'll reference this occasionally throughout this guide. Let's begin the optimization process. Here's what we're going to do. First thing you want to do is document your current settings. Start by going to your options and taking screenshots of your current settings. This will help you compare your initial setup with the final outcome and also serve, most importantly, as a backup in case things go wrong. After that, settings impacting CPU. These three settings are the biggest culprits to increasing your CPU time, which introduces stutters and lowers frame rates. Terrain level of detail, object level of detail, and buildings. Go ahead and turn these to their lowest respective setting. After you do that, applying the counterintuitive method. We'll start with applying settings that focus their impact on the GPU and little to no impact on CPU performance. These are identified in Babu's testing. Remember, these settings do affect your GPU, so balance them with your hardware's capabilities. Surprisingly, setting these to high or ultra can actually benefit you by offloading work to the GPU and freeing up the CPU, potentially reducing stuttering. Here's a list of settings you can adjust. If you have a fairly recent card, you can likely push these to high or ultra. I'll also make some comments throughout the list. Anti-aliasing, scaling, more on this soon. DLSS upscaling, I prefer everybody use TAA for glass cockpits to avoid fuzzy screens. DLSS can be tried if necessary. You'll also want frame generation on if you have that option enabled. AMD sharpening may enhance sharpness without CPU strain. Low latency is useful for input lag issues. DirectX. DirectX 11 is recommended unless you have the latest NVIDIA cards. DirectX 12 is also required for frame gen, so if you are wanting to use that, you need to have that on. Off-screen pre-caching. While this does decrease your average frame rate, 
It ultimately smoothens the experience by pre-caching the terrain around you. So when you're looking around side to side, up and down, it definitely helps with that. Terrain vector data set to ultra. This is really just a Bing Maps thing. Trees, grass and bushes, volumetric clouds, texture resolution, anisotropic filtering, texture super sampling, texture synthesis, water waves, shadow maps, terrain shadows, contact shadows, windshield effects, ambient occlusion, cube map reflections, ray march reflections, light shafts, bloom and depth of field. Moving on after that chunk, we have motion blur and lens correction. I recommend you turn these off. Motion blur is unnecessary and lens correction creates issues with click spots, specifically in the PMDG 737. Lens flare, adjust as per your preference. And a glass cockpit refresh rate can actually be set to high now as it runs on a separate thread. Thanks to Sobo. Jumping back to scaling real quick, for GPUs rendering a higher resolution than your screen, this can improve stutters, especially at lower resolutions like 1080p, as 1080p will hit the CPU more. Experiment with this as one of your final adjustments. For optimizing your settings, here's a strategy to follow. One, start with minimum CPU settings. As previously mentioned, initially set your CPU related settings to the lowest. This ensures maximum overhead availability for your CPU. Next, select the starting point for GPU settings. Determine where you want to begin with your GPU settings. The idea here is to evaluate the hardware that you have and think of what it's capable of. Then you can go ahead and set the GPU related settings to most likely either high or ultra if you have a relatively newish card. Three, monitor and adjust for optimal performance. Aim for satisfactory frame rate and CPU time while only adjusting GPU related settings. Ideally, you'll want this in the high teens to low 20s if feasible. Ensure that the GPU isn't being overtaxed during this process. Moving to four, proceed to the CPU settings. Once you're happy with the frame rate and CPU performance and you've confirmed that the GPU isn't maxed out, you can then move on to adjusting the CPU settings. Remember, these are the level of detail and building settings. Start by increasing those until you get a comfortable CPU time somewhere in the low to mid 20s, if feasible. This approach helps balance the load between your CPU and GPU, allowing you to incrementally find the sweet spot for both performance and visual quality in the sim. As you can see here now, we have no stuttering, good FPS, and everything looks amazing. To recap, it boils down to three simple steps. One, drop the three CPU settings down to their minimums. Two, increase the GPU settings to a comfortable level. Three, increase the CPU settings until you're happy. Remember, fine tuning your settings is an ongoing process. For instance, I sometimes adjust the level of detail settings when flying into challenging airports like JFK. I really hate that place, especially with heavy traffic. Therefore, choose a standard test location that's typically demanding performance wise, but it's also a place you frequently visit in the sim. And guys, once you've tried this method, come back and comment on your results. Did you notice a performance boost? Are you getting better frames, less stuttering? What are you guys seeing? Your feedback is invaluable to myself and our community. And don't miss the crucial post by the original Babu on the MSFS forums, linked below as a reminder. His insights are a cornerstone of today's guide, so give it a read. Before you go, remember to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you don't miss out on any future guides and tips. Happy flying, and see you in the skies.